All right, hello again, everybody. We are going to work on example number 11. And I see that it says B right here on the screen, but that's not part B, that's just part A. And actually, I'm going to. Oh, that actually is part B. There we go. There's part A. Sorry about that. So here we go. We're going to go ahead and do this problem for um, some rock or block that gets dropped. I'm sorry, released and it slides down uh, to point B and on to point C. So we're supposed to find out how fast it's going at B and how fast it's going at C. And so one of the interesting things about this problem is the free body diagram. So let's look at how we would draw that free body diagram. Let's say when the object is right there. It has a normal force, which is perpendicular to the surface. And it has a weight, which is straight down. Easier for me to say it than to actually do it with this board. And let's see, when it gets to right there, it has a normal force, which is like this. And weight straight down. Oh, I don't know how I did that, but sorry about that extra line there. Let's see if I can get rid of that. Mm. Mm. Not sure how to get rid of that line, but we'll just ignore it. And then, oh boy, now I don't have an arrow. All right, there we go. And when it gets to here, the normal force is this way. Oh, that's kind of confusing. But anyway, so the normal force keeps changing direction. And so that seems like that might make it difficult to find this. However, we recognize that weight is a conservative force and the normal force is the only one that we need to worry about. And if we just think about the direction of the displacement, it's always parallel to the track and the normal force is always perpendicular to the track. And so there's always a 90 degree angle and we know that the cosine of 90 degrees is zero. And so that means this term is going to go to zero. All right, so now we'll go ahead and look at this problem in some more detail. We'll say, okay, well, how are we gonna do this? All right, well, we, we need to decide what are we gonna analyze? So starting point, we'll say is A, so we'll go from A to B. And we'll make the PEG equals zero line right there. All right, so if we're going from A to B, it has gravitational potential energy at point A and no spring energy and it's released from rest. So no kinetic energy at the beginning. It still has gravitational potential energy when it gets to point B. Now we chose down here to be where the gravitational potential energy is zero. We could have chosen up here and that would have worked just fine. We just have to be careful in how we do it. There's no springs involved and yes, it does have kinetic energy when it gets to point B. And so we simply can say MGHA equals MGHB plus one half MVB squared. And then we can divide every single term by the mass, so that goes away. And we can solve and we get V sub B equals the square root of two G times H A minus H B. And so V B equals the square root of two times 9.8 meters per second squared times 36 meters minus 16 meters. And so we get 20 meters in here when we subtract that. If we had chosen to make this level our PEG equals zero line, that would have meant 
we would have substituted in a value of 20 meters here and zero here. So 20 minus zero works just as well as 36 minus 16. And then we get a BB of, uh, let's see, 19.8 meters per second. And that was by analyzing from A to B. If we analyze from B to C, we can do that and then we get MGHB plus one half MVB squared equals MGHC. Okay, that's a B right there. All right, so that's one way to do this. And we would, oh, sorry, that's not quite right. This is gonna be zero. And so we're actually only gonna have one half MVC squared on that side. Sorry about that. And then we would get VC equals 26.6 .6 meters per second. All right. And so I'll let you fill in the numbers there, but that's, that's, a, that's one way to do it, but there's another way to do it as well. We could analyze from A to C. And this is something students don't realize. They think if they see the letter A here and they see the letter B here and the letter C here, if we know something about A, then we have to find B and then C. That's totally not true. If we know, if we make state A our initial and state C our final, we don't care about what's happening at point B. Although in this problem we do because we we're asked about that. But we need to keep in mind that we can analyze from any two points as our initial and final, as long as we do it properly. And so if A is our initial, then we're gonna have MGHA, we're gonna have gravitational potential energy at the beginning. And then at the end, we're going to have kinetic energy. And so that's all that we need to be able to solve for the velocity at C. So it's just equal to the square root of two GHA, where HA is equal to 36 meters. And there's that crazy line again. Sorry about that. All right. All right, now let's look at this energy bar chart here. And now we have to be very specific about how we're doing this, but let's say we're going from A to B for our energy bar chart. All right, A to B, it started off, it had some gravitational potential energy. One, two, three, four lines. It did not have any kinetic energy. It had no spring energy, no work by non-conservative forces. And then when it got to point B, it had some kinetic energy and it had some gravitational potential energy. So this could be four, two, and two such that the total here equals the total there, where these first four correspond to these first four terms of the equation, the left-hand side. These last three terms are on the right-hand side of the equation. Okay, we could have made energy bar charts uh, for any of the other cases as well. All right, now the next part, part B, actually is a alternate version. It's not a continuation exactly. It's more of an alternate problem based on the same idea. Now we have non-conservative forces that are acting such as friction and air resistance. It's, we, we already know that the normal force is there, but it's not doing any work. But now we have forces that are non-conservative and they're doing work. And so if that's the case, we have to consider that. Now the, the tricky thing is, again, drawing the free body diagram, the Air resistance and friction are acting opposite to the motion at any given point. And so there's always a 180 degree angle wherever the object happens to be, force acting that way, displacement. So 180 degree angle at any given time. Okay, so we, we expect therefore that the um, 
that the work done, we expect that work done to come out to be a negative value. And we'll see if that ends up being the case. All right, so we will analyze from A to C. And that is important to, to realize that we do wanna analyze from A to C. Sometimes people will go and they'll use this value of 19.8 that they calculated, but that would not be a good value to use because the object only gets to be going 19.8 meters per second at point B if there's no friction and air resistance from A to B. So we don't wanna use that. So we'll look all the way from A to C. It has some gravitational potential energy, no spring energy. It started from rest. Yes, we have work by non-conservative forces. By the time it gets to point C, we'll say that the gravitational potential energy is zero at that line, okay, all the way across there. And so that's zero, no spring, and it has some kinetic energy. So MGHA plus the work by non-conservative forces equals one half MVF squared. This really MVC squared. And so now we can find this work by non-conservative forces equal to one half times 10 kilograms times 24 meters per second squared minus 10 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. Looks like I lost some of that. Nine point eight meters per second squared times uh, what was it? Thirty six meters. Okay, and this we plug this into our calculator. We get a value which is negative as we expected. Next, negative six hundred forty eight joules. I guess I should have pointed out that you might have been inclined, hey, we're finding work. And so you might have thought, we're gonna do this, FD cosine theta. But we don't know, we do know the value of theta, we talked about that. But we don't know the value of D, and we don't know the value of F. Right? We know the, the height it was, but we don't know how long it actually traveled on this track. That The length of that curve is unknown. The size of the force or forces is unknown, so that's not, going to be possible way to uh, find the, the work done by non-conservative forces here. All right, let's look at the energy bar chart. And so it had no kinetic energy at the beginning, had some gravitational potential energy. We'll go up one, two, three, four bars. No uh, work by the spring. I'm sorry, no potential energy by the spring. There is work done by non-conservative forces. So we'll make that say negative two, and then this, we have to figure out, remember, these have to all add up to the total of these. And since these are zero, if this is four and this is negative two, this one must be positive two. Okay, and those are just representative values. All right, that's all for this problem. We'll come back and solve some more problems in a future video.